Welcome back to Facebook Live and to Zoom. This is Divanathon, which is our weekly couch conversations and film watching. I'm Pamela Lavitt, the Director of Arts and Ideas and the Seattle Jewish Film Festival. Many of you know that back in March, right before Shelter in Place, uh, we had to postpone the sad, the sad 25th silver screen anniversary of the Seattle Jewish Film Festival. But one of the things that our shelter in place has given us an opportunity to do is to bring back some of the most amazing filmmakers that we've brought to the film festival over the last 25 years. And tonight's guest in particular, director Danny Mankin, is one of my favorites and a close friend. And in 2006, Danny Mankin won our first Audience Choice Award for the film 39 Pounds of Love. And this year, for the opening night of the Seattle Jewish Film Festival, he was slated to receive our Real Difference Award. So I'm very excited to bring Danny back. And in a moment, if everybody who's on the Zoom will mute themselves for a moment, because I can hear you. <laughs> Um, if you, if everybody would please, uh, in a moment, I'll reveal everyone, but so happy that you're all here to join us. Those of you who are on Facebook, you can put your questions in. Those of you who are joining us on Zoom, please either use the chat box or the Q&A. And with that, I just wanted to let you know that um, next week we have quite a few Zooms coming up on Tuesday. We are going to have a conversation a week from today about Yiddish cinema. And I'm going to, as a Yiddish speaker and a person who loves Yiddish cinema, uh, have put out a couple of links to about five or six Yiddish films that are out in the world. And I hope that you'll watch some of them and join me for a conversation about the current look at Yiddish film and the use of Yiddish in contemporary images such as Unorthodox, Menasha, um, Stiesel, and other films. So join me for that conversation. Next Thursday, we'll have a conversation about telemedicine. And on Sunday, May 31st, we have a class with um, Ellen Morenas of the Musar Institute, who will be talking about Jewish spirituality in the time of pandemics then and now. So without further ado, I'd like to please uh, welcome our panelists. And I wanna just say a few words about uh, Danny Menken, who is a dear friend. Uh, Danny Menken, uh, his film, 39 Pounds of Love, as I mentioned, was one of the first films to be in our film festival in, back in 2006 when I was still directing this festival. And uh, I'm so excited that he was also shortlisted for an Oscar for that film. It won our Audience Choice Award. And Danny's, almost every single one of Danny's films has been in the Seattle Jewish Film Festival, I believe. Dolphin Boy, up until a picture of his life, uh, on the map. There are so many wonderful things for us to talk about. But I'm also really excited uh, to have some of Danny's collaborators from that film. It's a little bit of a reunion today. And I'd like to welcome Asaf Shaul and uh, Chris Gubish, who are joining us, I believe, from LA. And this is a 15-year history of your relationships, uh, which began with 39 Pounds of Love. So I don't know how many people have actually seen the film, but I wanted to just go ahead and assume that everyone's watched it, or you can go to our website and see it. But I want to hear a little bit of, first about Danny's journey on this film. It could have been a typical buddy film, but this is not a typical buddy film. This is about somebody who suffers from severe muscular dystrophy, was never expected to live beyond the age of six, and at age 34, I believe, is traveling across the United States on a motorcycle. So can you tell Tell us a little bit about how you grew into this story. Yeah, first, uh, Pamela, great to be with you guys. Always a joy. And uh, the festival is one of my favorite. Coming to Seattle is always just a, a big joy and fun. And I can't wait to be back physically. And uh, going back to 39 pounds of love, uh, it's almost a... Uh, like asking somebody about his first love uh, because it because it was my first international film it was a passion project and there was no logic behind it some people say that in your first film you make all the mistakes you can possibly make and then those mistakes become your style so i think that's what happened with 39 pounds of love i we just uh, did everything not by the book. And mm -hmm. we picked up a pretty difficult subject of uh, 
a wonderful person that inspired us all, like Ami, that uh, weighs 39 pounds and just moved one finger in his body, and that's how he creates animation. But he wants to go to the United States to look for the doctor that never gave him a chance to pass the age of six, and now he is 34 years old, and he's riding a Harley Davidson, and he's making peace with his, his brother, and he's confronting the doctor, and all that when he's showing the world that you can live life to the fullest no matter what. So that was the idea behind this film. We uh, never thought that this film will be at HBO, will be shortlisted for the Oscars, will win the Israel Academy Awards, will win Seattle and so many other festivals. Uh, it was really something that we've done and out of love. The love to the story, the love to Ami, and the love to ourselves as a group. And right now, 15 years later, I'm still working with wonderful people like Asaf that we met in the movie. <laughs> Asaf never thought he's going to be in the movie business. And uh, he was in Ami's business. And, uh, and uh, he joined me and he works with me now in Hajjud Productions. And... And uh, Christopher Gooby, she's has made the mu the music for Picture of His Life and for Alsi, which we will show uh, at the Seattle Jewish Film Festival. So it's all just a, a wonderful closure of a circle. And as I said, this film has changed my life. I actually met uh, my wife at the opening of this film, the premiere at HBO. That was when. I met Miriam, who became also uh, uh, my wife and the mother of my two kids. So if you hear the noise of the kid, that's also because of 39 pounds of love. <laughs> so before we get to Asaf and Chris and their contributions, I mean, what the arc of your career, and perhaps I'm incorrect in, in stamping this, but the reason why you won overwhelmingly the first jury prize of the Seattle Jewish Film Festival, which is the Golden Oar or the Golden Light, uh, and well, as well as the Real Difference Award this year. And you're amongst some good company people who've also been nominated for actual Academy Awards and so on and so forth, is because something about the subjects that you focus on are, have some either internal struggle, trauma, external to the world or not, that they are overcoming and you are showing how they have to overcome some adversity. So what's the relationship between you and Ami and the journey that you wound up taking? It must've been very scary for his health. And there are moments when Asaf, and maybe Asaf can speak to this, who was his home and help with his home and healthcare work during the travels. But how did you decide to have him overcome this massive, impediment to doing what he wanted to do. And then we can also talk about his artistry and how the images of his animation show another side of how he overcomes as well. Yeah, so the reason the name of our company is Hey Jude Productions is because of the line of the Beatles, take a sad song and make it better. And when people look at Ami, they think it's a sad song. It's a sad story. And it is not. Uh, Asaf will tell you that Ami was funny, hilarious, and uh, I think one of the most funny moments in the movie, I will give the credit to Ami, that he wrote it. You know, I'm titled as a writer, director, producer in this film, but it really was a labor of so many people that gave their love to it. For example, you know, when I met uh, Christopher Gubish, I actually interviewed so many other composers, but there was one thing about Chris and his music that was so unique because he did not see this film as a sad story. He didn't see Ami as a sad story. And that's what Ami wanted to tell. You know, he said, look, no, no I, I'm, I'm an inspiring story. I'm celebrating life to the fullest. And that was Chris's music. And that's why we connected, connected so well. So Ami just cracked us. He always wanted Asaf and I to drink whiskey. We were the nerdy ones. And he really taught us a lot about life. And until today, Ami is not with us for more than 10 years. He passed away, but he's in many ways with us because in many intersections in my life, I still seek for his advice and usually gives so, me the right advice. 
So Asaf is somebody who was uh, a good friend who was on this journey, but also there are scenes in the film where you, there's a scare in which he passes out and you're carrying him and physically carrying him. Just looking at the image of the animation is something that you enabled Ami to do. You enabled him to travel from place to place to get on that motorcycle. What can you say you know, about your friendship, Asaf, and, and what was your role in the film itself? Well, uh, first, it still amazed me uh, to uh, see 15 years after the film uh, is out there, that people are still watching it and uh, getting excited like we did the journey uh, last night. Um, and uh, you should understand that uh, being a protagonist on Danny's film is not a 15 minutes of glory experience. Uh, it's a lifetime mission. That's why we're still working together. And, you know, Danny is uh, falling in love with his characters. And uh, it's uh, uh, amazing to see uh, how um, he, 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 he keeps everybody around him. Uh, that's how he chooses his stories. Uh, it's only something that uh, comes from his heart. And that was the same thing with uh, Ami's story. Um, Regarding the journey that we went through, um, everyone who watched 39 Pounds of Love probably understood that no one tells Ami or advise him uh, what should he do uh, for his next uh, uh, adventure. Uh, Ami decides, Ami creates, and Ami produces everything that uh, comes up on his mind. Uh, we are just the followers. Um, so, Going with Ami on this journey uh, to cross the United States, which sounds pretty much a crazy thing to do uh, these days, 20 years later, uh, it's, uh, it, it was only something that created in Ami's mind. And uh, I was, as his caretaker, uh, on some kind of an automatic pilot, just following uh, his leads and uh, um, I, I once said that he actually uh, fulfilled dreams that I didn't know that I have. So um, that's my experience uh, working and being Ami's friend. Hey, Chris, maybe you can chime in here. And if you want to, even musically, I did want to show an image. Like, Danny, I don't know how much of the film is animation, but it is a very big portion of the film. And Chris's music like you said, is just so uplifting and it brings out uh, this flight, literally, that the birds of the animated, uh, you know, Ami's animation as a professional animator. So maybe Chris, if you could tell us a little bit about how you decided to work with the animation in particular, and then the rest of the film and maybe play a little bit for us. Oh, sure. Um, no, it's, uh, the animation is a wonderful, it's, it's such a wonderful opportunity to see what's going on, you know, inside of Ami's head. And it's, it's also a wonderful way to sort of keep that feeling going when we're not seeing the animation. So then the whole film sort of has this sort of, you know, the thematic musical coherence to it. Um, it was, um, I, I thought it was funny that the way that Danny said that I had, uh, we shared that the happiness, um, you know, that's absolutely true. I think that goes beyond, beyond just Ami. But I think, you know, it, there's, it's such a joyful picture. And I think that uh, the road trip that you see in this movie is very much what working with Danny is like in general. He invites you on this wonderful trip and, you know, you, you, you just like, you can't wait to see where you're going to go next. Um, mm -hmm. I can play a little bit of the end of the movie, if you'd like, the, at the climax. Yeah, where we'd love to. yeah if you see, yeah. him, you see him, the motorcycle ride that he's been waiting yeah. for, go life. Um, yeah, go for it. <laughs> this is where the music definitely the music and the animation work together and you see the actual animation music is his real life has become animation at this point so it's it's a it's a very joyful moment and it's the most fun part of making this film is the uh, the music
your ET moment. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, we can stop. Is that good? We'll just stop it right there. Okay. Anyway. So good. You know, it's. A, I just, you know, I think that there's something about the sophistication of the relationship, Danny, that you've built with Chris and your music, because your your films have gotten very sophisticated, and uh, in terms of the images, there's there's a lot of uh, things that you can see in the arc of your career that have changed. So, how has your relationship with Chris and music changed? I think you know we're uh, we're more grown up. You know, we have our past and her voice so we know kind of what we want I think in the first movie you are not sure okay does this work or not and and at some point when you're making now when we worked on I mean correct me Chris if I'm if, if you think the same way or not but um, uh, when we work now on Alsi and on Picture of His Life which I co-directed with Jonathan Neer but I worked uh, specifically on, on the music with Chris, I feel like we knew what we wanted. There was a sense of, okay, this is what it is. And we felt it, you know, you feel, you feel the music and, and the way it works nicely with Chris is that I can communicate the feeling and he will translate it to the music. And this is for me, the icing on the cake. It's the most fun part in making a movie, making music. I really wanted to be in the Beatles. I still think I should have been there, but uh, I'm not a musician, I'm a filmmaker. So um, uh, filmmaking is a way for me to bring the music side in me out there. I, I think I'm, I'm making more music in my mind than actually telling a story. And when I hear a, a good piece of music, I, I, I kind of see it as a story more than just a piece of music, if it makes sense. So Chris, I'm just curious, just as a follow-up, because you know Danny and a lot of Israeli filmmakers are are their stories don't have to necessarily tell you something specifically Jewish or about a character, right? And your music, I didn't hear minor keys. There's something super uplifting. So what were the what were the decisions that you had to make about inhabiting this space? It almost, I don't even know what instruments are playing. Maybe you could just give us a, a, a window open into the mind of a composer and how you created that soundscape. <laughs> well, a a actually a lot of it's um, collaboration. There's the, a big theme um, of the movie comes from a song written by the very talented Tommy Holmes who sang and performed some music as well. Um, and Danny introduced the two of us I, um, when we started the movie. Um, and there's a song, Kiss Me Goodnight. Uh, we re-recorded re it um, for the film. And then I used the melody like throughout the, throughout the soundtrack. So it's one of the scenes, the da, 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 da. You hear that at the very end. Um, so, so that's actually a big part of it. I think, you know, Danny understands that the best way to achieve truth is to assemble a lot of different you know, elements together and, um, when you have a lot of different viewpoints, you make something very real out of it. Yeah. So Danny, I, just to follow up on the whole notion of sort of Israeli documentary film and you're, you're living, you've been living in LA for quite a while and kind of going in between Israel and the US, but how do you fit into the pantheon of Israeli documentary filmmaking if you do at all? Your films seem to be somewhat apart from that in your characters and in their struggles, their traumas, and even up to now, Amos Nahum from Picture of His Life, who is somewhat a quintessential Israeli, you know, kind of out there on his own, very Sabra, you know, how do you, how do you think of yourself as an Israeli filmmaker if you do? Uh, I actually uh, don't see myself as a, a necessarily as an Israeli filmmaker. And I don't see myself necessarily as a documentary filmmaker because I, in, I craft all my work in, as a storyteller, like it's a fiction film. So when I worked on Dolphin Boy with Jonathan and Nir and Picture of His Life, or when I've done a, a On the Map or my new film that will come out later this year, uh, Olsi, 
uh, or 39 Pounds of Love, or Is That You, which was totally a fiction film with actors. I, I see it the same way. I see them as fiction film. More than that, right now, part of what I'm doing right in LA is turning Dolphin Boy into a narrative. So I'm writing now a screenplay based on Dolphin Boy. I'm writing, and uh, this is one of my favorite parts, and then I'm uh, writing on the map into narrative film. I'm writing also into narrative film. So this is part of what I love doing and what I plan to do. So it's really exciting for me. And uh, hopefully it will be as successful as, uh, as uh, my previous work was. I'm just curious, I'm showing the, film, the, the photo from Dolphin Boy and it, who took this photo? <laughs> That's a nice closure uh, for us because the one who took this picture is Amos. Amos Nahum took this picture and uh, so uh, uh, Jonathan and I collaborated on Dolphin Boy and collaborated on Amos. We actually met first because of uh, Amos and uh, that was after 39 Pounds of Love. I was approached by a producer in Israel to make a story about Amos. It was too tough, too expensive. And uh, it took us 10 years uh, that in between, uh, I asked Jonathan, don't you have just a simple story about a dolphin in Israel? He said, I actually do. <laughs> and, and we worked four years on Dolphin Boy and Dolphin Boy came a very successful film. And then we said, you know, but remember what we wanted to, to do at the beginning. And uh, Jonathan and I remembered that was the story of Amos. And we came back to tell that story and we're thrilled to bring it uh, June 18, right? We're going to be uh, showing it at the Seattle uh, Jewish Film Festival this year. And um, we're thrilled that it's going to be released on a virtual cinema. So whoever wants to uh, go and watch it, uh, I'll be there for Q&A. Uh, we hope to, for, to have also Amos and Jonathan and uh, maybe Christopher about the music. <laughs> but uh, it was just a wonderful joy making a picture of his life. And, and part of the... Part of what is similar to 39 Pounds of Love, Dolphin Boy, Picture of His Life, Olsi, is the fact that you start at some point and you do not know how you will end. You know, you cannot, you know, you cannot begin with the end in mind because you do not, not know how it will end. So there's something about, I mean, I mostly showed some of his photos, but there's something about uh, even Is That You with my favorite, you know, Abu Bol, who was the, at our film festival Abu many Abu years Bull. ago. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, yeah. uh, but, you know, these are masculine kind of characters that, that are struggling uh, internally, externally with expectations, with family trauma, with medical issues. Well, I'd love to know when the lady, fo the lady uh, subject is coming out, but given that we're in the time of pandemic and everyone is struggling with something, an odd question, and maybe it's a little on the fly, but how would each of your characters, even the Maccabi Tel Aviv you know, winning team, deal with the adversity that we're in right now? Uh, it's a question, but you know what? Actually, Alona Budbul, uh, sat with me once and, and he, he told me, Dan, you know, I, 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 I love your films and, and I, I wanted to know what would be the one thing that connected all of them. And, and I did not know what would be the answer. Maybe the take it sad song and make it better part, the underdog, the bittersweetness of it. But, uh, but he said, you know, I know what it is. They, they all, they are all sick in the family. That's what was his answer, not mine. And I thought about it because in many ways, picture of his life, Amos is seeking the family, the father he never had. And he found it with the family of the polar bear, the mother and the two cubs, without revealing too much to your audience that still needs to see the movie. And with Dolphin Boy, it's in many ways, it's a, it's a love story between a father and a son. And, and, and the father wants to bring the son back home. And the story of Helena and Ami in 39 Pounds of Love, and of course, uh, Olsi, who is looking for his daughter, and, uh, and uh, Alona Budbul, and is that you? He was looking for the love that he had 40 years ago. So I don't know, maybe that's 
part of it. Mm. I, I can't put my finger. I know just that I, I try to make the film that I like to see. And mm. that's pretty simple. I, mean, I, I, I need to enjoy the process. And that's why I choose subjects that I love. I choose people that I love to work with because it's damn hard. You need to raise money and everybody is looking at you like you're crazy dude. Why don't you just get a real job and leave us alone? And you still wake up in the morning with this crazy dream about going to the Canada Arctic or going to a cross country journey with Abby or diving with dolphins. And, uh, and I think right now, after so many years, my father is letting go and telling myself, you know what, Danny, don't get a real job. I think you're okay. <laughs> I hope he does. <laughs> so I'm just curious too, for those of you who've been collaborating with Danny for 15 years, you know, you've had to translate this crazy journey also into different images, into support. Um, Maybe Chris, when it comes to picture of his life, and I'll go ahead and tease out to everybody, just like Danny said, that we are hoping to announce soon an opportunity to see this film before it goes on to video on demand. And Danny and some of his collaborators will be joining us. So just pencil it in for June 18th at 7 p.m. Keep an eye on Facebook, keep an eye on your email blasts. But um, can you tell us a little bit about uh, your journey in, in working with him? Asaf, why don't you go first? Because you've gone through a couple of iterations as a healthcare provider, and now you're working in film. Yeah, I actually started, I, I met Danny through 39 Pounds of Love. I was Ami's caretaker um, and became one of the characters in the movie. I never planned to do so. Um, and till these days, I am... Um, amazed by watching you know this film and uh, thinking of the journey that we went through together uh because we were very innocent and uh, and we thought that danny is uh, you know he's a little bit uh, off he's thinking <laughs> of uh, you know taking all of us to united states and uh, crossing the country which sounds amazing if he wants to pay for it and uh, we'll have a great uh, adventure together uh, so that's exactly how it started. Uh, we thought, um, uh, Ami maybe thought that it would be bigger, but I thought that it would be something small for, you know, maybe as uh, something for the family, or maybe Dan is going to sell it for a remote uh, channel in Israel. Uh, and that's about it. But uh, Danny's engine of uh, creating and doing uh, is still following his films even 15 years later, and he can still talk passionately about uh, what he's done. Uh, and that's uh, exactly what it means to work with Danny, because he puts everything in uh, his creations. And even 15 years later, he can still talk about uh, what he done and, uh, and the journey that uh, uh, we've done together like it happened yesterday. And, and if you talk to him, he might go to the editing room to edit <laughs> some more you know, of this film tomorrow. <laughs> and Chris, when I, look at your, when I look at your like IMDb bio, I mean, the vast majority of your compositions are working in collaboration with Danny. I'm sure that there are other things that you are doing. So fill us in on that process for you and what, your, what it's been like working with Danny. Uh, no, it's been fantastic. Yeah, I, I have a, a music library that's out there in a lot of commercials. I usually don't know, you know, where it's going to wind up until I see a commercial. And I'm like, oh, I know that track. Um, so, you know, and especially in these times, like royalties are a wonderful thing to just sort of keep you going. Um, Danny, uh, you know, like you mentioned before, like w with Danny, the inspiration is, is being able to share, share that joy and that positive outlook in a way that isn't like weak or vulnerable, but it's really, it's something about a very strong heart light. Um, you know, and it makes me just, it makes me write better music. Hey Danny, maybe that's your superpower, but uh, can you think of another one that you have? Because clearly you've had a career, um, very successful one 
in Jewish film festivals, HBO, uh, shortlisted for an Oscar. Um, so what's next for you? I know that All See is a film and a picture of his life, but tell us, tell us where your mind is now. And artists obviously create a lot during this sheltering time. I've seen a lot of great things that people put out there. Where's your head at at this time? So for me, it was an incredible time to write. And then, um, uh, you know, because being at home and uh, you have no more excuses. And I think the most important organ in uh, writing a movie is your butt. You know, that's the most important. Just put yourself <laughs> out there on the street and, 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 and work, which is tough because it's, you know, you, you don't know what will come out. Uh, so that's really exciting for me. So as I mentioned, Dolphin Boy, 39 Pounds of Love, and All See, on the map, they're all narrative films and thinking that there will be an actor that will play one of those characters, it's very exciting for me. And same for a picture of his life. Where can people at this time see some of your films, like 39 Pounds, uh, On the Map? Mm -hmm. These are just played in our, you know, On the Map played in our festival only yeah. two years ago about Maccabee Tel Aviv's 1977 Dream Team. But where can these films be seen at this point? And yeah. So we've been asked this question a lot. The, the easiest way to reach out for us and to get a link is by going to heyjudeproductions.com. Uh, you can probably put the link on the on the comment, heyjudeproductions.com. And we love to share our films. You know, some people like to give us some donations for our not-for-profit because we that's how we are making our film, by, you know, uh, people giving us donations and we're telling good non-political stories uh, from Israel. So that's part of what uh, we do. And we love to to share our links. I know is that you is on Amazon Prime. Uh, same for Je Tema La Vie Terminal on Amazon Prime. And uh, yeah, so uh, we're, we're, we're doing more and more work now into engaging with our audience. And this is another thing that we have started to do. Uh, as soon as the pandemic started, uh, we launched our first and uh, uh, and biggest, I would say, uh, Quarantine International Film Festival. <laughs> That's how we called it. And uh, we have uh, shown uh, on the map and uh, we have shown the 39 pounds of love and we have engaged with our audience. So one of the one beautiful things that we're doing right now here with you is uh, just connecting with people. And uh, I love doing this. This is part of the reason we wanted to uh, go on in this journey is to touch people's life. And there are people that write to us and, and tell us until today how much 39 Pounds of Love impacted them, how much Dolphin Boy impacted them, all see a picture of his life on the map. And, you know, that's the reason why, why we do that. It's also the reason why you are our juried prize award winner this year and our Real Difference Award winner for the film festival. I'm so excited and can't wait to obviously hopefully deliver the film streaming to the community soon, but in particular to have you back in Seattle for a third or fourth time to give yeah. you that award in person. I just wanna thank so much also Chris and Asaf for the time that you took today to be with us. Obviously we're on Facebook Live and this will go on to our um, archived at our YouTube page as well. And I think of this as a warm up to the bigger show, which is having picture of his life here in Seattle. And Danny, thank you so much for being such a great friend to Seattle and to Jewish film festivals and festivals internationally. And with that, I'm going to say, uh, we're gonna take it out with a, a trailer of Picture of His Life. And thank you all for coming, stay safe, stay well. And hopefully Danny's films will inspire us how to all live a better life and overcome the adversity if you're facing any right now. So thank you so much, everybody. Thank you very much, Pamela. Thank you. Thank you. See you in Seattle. 
Nautilus to me is uh, one of the best ambassadors of the ocean. It takes huge amount of risk to bring those images which nobody else has ever been able to capture. He comes back with images that no one can get. He is probably the best underwater still photographer in the world. His story was always read in mystery. He doesn't have a normal life. He doesn't have children. He's married to the ocean. He has this passion. He wants to be in the water, close to polar bear, swim with the biggest predator on Earth. If the wind gets too turbulent, we're not going to go there. There's so many factors that can work against you. All right, guys, we're taking off. Oh. Carlos and his team have only five days to find a polar bear and take the picture. It's the one animal where humans are part of their food chain. People get eaten by polar bears. He needs that adrenaline rush. He needs to be at the edge. And if he doesn't do it in one way, he'll do it in another way. And maybe his military background has hard to do with it. I wonder if there is some kind of unfinished business with Colombia. Believing in yourself, and go all the way with no matter what else. And this is all the power of being. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Take care. Be well. Thank you. Thank you, Pamela. Thank you. Bye-bye.